What is up heroes, this is Midnight Zero, and welcome back to the NCBL Season 4. This is going to be Week 8, we're going up against Liam, coach of the Pittsburgh Piplups. And as you can see on screen, his team is a pretty solid team, a pretty threatening team. The only thing I would say is Liam hasn't been doing so hot this particular season. Well, in reality, it's it's been a mix of him actually playing and him forfeiting. He's actually only played four of his seven games thus far due to scheduling conflicts and a whole bunch of other stuff. So it's pretty difficult to get a read on him. And admittedly, this has been one of the most rushed team builders of my uh, season thus far, simply because I had my big block three um, exam on musculoskeletal system, all, all this med school stuff last Friday and then immediately after that I flew out to visit Lizzie and while doing so I didn't really want to take the time to team build or uh, battle nonetheless so I'm basically asking for an extension to battle on Monday or Tuesday and the only time he's available during the, that time period is uh, three hours on Monday during which I actually have an important meeting for an hour and a half of it and I'll be in the city as opposed to in my typical recording area so I'm gonna try and put together some sort of situation where I can record this, but if it does have to be a post-commentary, please do understand. I honestly love battling while commentating far more than battling on my own and then post-commentating, so I'll try my best to make it happen, but please do understand if I can't make that work. And also, it's really late uh, right now because I got back really late from my flight and I have to get up super early tomorrow, but I can't... There's definitely not enough time to do a team builder and a battle tomorrow after my meeting before Liam um, is no longer available, so, so just gotta do what you gotta do, I guess. Regardless, let's take a look at his team. He's got Mega Metacham, absolute threat, um, high jump kick from this thing, hits super hard, pure power, you know, taking the base 100 attack and literally doubling it. So, you know, stab, base 120 high jump kicks, you know, coming off a ridiculous attack stat is just insane. So hard to deal with. Darmanitan. He actually traded with Sam just uh, before our match, or not just before our match, just like before this week, so that Darmanitan is applicable to this particular match, meaning, yes, again, I have to deal with this monster of a Mon, and yeah. Um, Flow at Eternal is a Pokemon that hasn't been legally released yet, but we have made legal in the league. Honestly, I don't really know why, but it's a thing, he has it, it's really threatening from a special side, but that's about it. Thunderous T I've used in the past. I really liked using it. It's great um, for an immune for a couple immunities, for a setup sweeper. It's really strong. It's got a great move pool. Definitely a threat. Surprised it's not a Zemon. Next up is Latios. It's um, his Z captain. Where Star Manitan is the Z secondary, and Latios is a really bulky but still offensively present Mon with a great speed tier. Access to recovery. Access to defog. You know Z Dracos really hit hard. Calm Mind, Thunderbolt, Ice Beam, Psychic. Earthquake, Hidden Power, it's really got a lot of different things it can do. Definitely a scary mon to go up against. Fortress is really bulky on the physically si physical side. It can set up spikes, uh, Stealth Rock, it can Rapid Spin Hazards Away, it can Volt Switch for Momentum, it can Gyro Ball, and it's got Sturdy, so it can reliably set up all of those things. Swellow, Specs, Boom Burst. All right, Ditto. <laughs> uh, Ditto is one of my favorite Pokemon to use in League formats. Really sad I couldn't get it this season. I haven't gotten it in a while, but it's really fun to use. I hate going up against it, but again, it's very, very dependent on the skill of the user. Ditto is horrible unless you use it absolutely correctly. And, uh, well, Liam has yet to use it, really, so, yeah. Um, Gastrodon is a pain to deal with, but I think my bulk can out-bulk it, per se. And Venusaur, um... Yeah, it's not Mega, so it's not that great in my opinion. It can be scary in the sun, and it can still hit hard, but just not not quite as bulky or hard-hitting enough to really warrant um, a lot of respect, I guess. Cloyster is really scary when it gets up to Shell Smash, but outside of that, it's really not that much of a threat. It has to get that Shell Smash in order to uh, do anything, and it's pretty tough for it to get those Shell Smashes, especially when it's Rocks weak, and it has really, really meager special defenses. Scrafty is a mon that I used, um, was it NCPL Season 2? Yeah, NCPL Season 2. It's really bulky. It's it's in a weird spot because it has a reliable recovery. Really, it can run Shed Skin, Rest Talk, Bulk Up. It can run Dragon Dance. It can run Intimidate Bulky. It can run AV, Intimidate, making a mixed bulk. It can get recovery with you know, drain punch, it can also hit really hard with high jump kick, it's a good knockoff user, it's a great dark type switch in. So, yeah, it's it's a bit of an oddball, difficult to uh, feel out, but 
Lycanroc. Um, honestly, not, in my opinion, that great of a Pokemon. It's a good, you know, Taunt, Stealth Rock setter. It has Accelerock, which I think is going to be relevant this week, given I have Volcarona. And, yeah, it can hit pretty hard with Stone Edge. It's got Fire Fang. That's really all it's good for. It's kind of like a Suicide Lead, Taunt, Rocks, do some damage, and then you're good to go. Magneton, um, relevant for trapping purposes only. <laughs> it can, uh, it can really, it actually can hit really hard with Specs Analytic. Flash Cannons, I don't know if you remember from the Co-op League a long time ago, had a lot of fun using Magneton. It can definitely hit hard, so definitely a threat. Now, my team this week. My team this week was really tough to come up with. I tried settling in on a few things. I didn't have a lot of time to settle in on things, but I tried coming up with something and it was just like wouldn't sit right. And then I tried something else and it just wouldn't sit right. And, and honestly, what I have now is kind of just what I had when I ran out of time, per se. So... I think it can get the job done, it's just not going to be as pretty or as clean as it has been in the past. Uh, I feel like in the past I've had really reliable teams I felt could really get the job done, I knew how to use and had a lot of confidence in and was able to do so effectively in my matches, but this one, it's kind of dependent on what he brings, how he plays, it might be a little bit sloppier with having to sack mons or, you know, feel things out, but not having as much flexibility to do so. But. Yeah, regardless, let's hop into the team. The first Mon that I'm bringing this week is going to be Reuniclus, uh, Yayurozu Momo, or Momo. Um, and it's just 100% physical, physically defensive. It's my Mega Metacham counter. It's the only thing that can take it on on my team. Like, that, that's just what it is. I think max defense Garchomp takes like 65 to 75% from uh, high jump kick, whereas Reuniclus from an adamant High Jump Kick takes 46% max, which is really cool because I can then recover up on it. And thanks to Leftovers, after Rocks, I take two Adamant High Jump Kicks, which is really incredible um, because this is this is my dedicated Metacham answer. And if I scare it out, I can potentially Calm Mind up. I can, I mean, of course, I can recover Regenerator for when I switch out, so that I can be back at 100% and I can switch back into Mega Metacham whenever it does come out. And yeah, uh, Calm Mind is there because I can set up on a bunch of things. You know, not necessarily Darmanitan, but a lot of his special attackers I can actually set up on, um, or if I force one of his, you know, physical mons out, or one of his weaker mons out, or something like Venusaur out, I can uh, set up a Calm Mind and then start scaring things out. You know, between Psychic and Signal Beam, I hit almost everything on his team really hard. Ferretris isn't really appreciating Psychics, uh, Swellow isn't appreciating Psychics, neither is Magneton, nor is Magneton really doing much to me. Um, Latias isn't appreciating the Signal Beams, and... Yeah, Psy Psychic does a lot to his team. That's really kind of what it comes down to. So that's the that's the game plan here. It is be a Metacham counter and do damage back with Psychic or Signal Beam after recovering and keeping yourself healthy. And the more times he has to go for High Jump Kick, the better, because he runs out of PP. And of course, there's always that 10% chance he'll miss and do 50% damage to himself, in addition to not doing any damage to me, meaning I'm free to go for an attack the next turn. And so, yeah, that's the idea here. Metacham counter, potentially set up sweeper, or at least put a dent in things. Next up, we have Porygon 2, Ochako, um, or Urarako Ochako, which is going to be my specially defensive mon. Yes, another 252, 252. But the idea here is he's got mostly special attackers. Like, outside of Darmanitan and Mega Metacham, he really doesn't have any. I mean, like, Cloyster to an extent, Scrafty, Lycanroc, but neither, none of those are really, like, worth, I don't know, dedicating a wall to, but something like Thunderous T, Latias, especially Z Latias, Spec Swellow, uh, those are some mons that are really worth dedicating a mon to. Um, plus two, I think Thunderous T's Thunderbolt does like 53-ish percent to Porygon 2. My Ice Beam is doing a lot. Between Ice Beam and Shadow Ball, I'm hitting almost everything really hard. Uh, you know, in particular, Mega Metacham, they don't want it switching in on me, or if it needs to risk going for a high jump kick, I can go for a Shadow Ball in case he misses, or if he decides to overpredict and not high jump kick, something like that. Uh, Shadow Ball hits just about everything pretty neutrally, and what it doesn't hit, Shadow Ball, or um, Ice Beam does. Uh, mainly, what I want to be hitting is Latios, Swellow, uh, Thunderous T, and Toxicking everything else. I Ice Beam Venusaur as well, that's another thing worth noting, and what's also really cool is Shadow Ball hits Magneton neutrally, and similar to last week, we are planning on trapping Magneton with its own Steel Pole. 
or magnet pull. Because Magneton can trap other steel types, we come in, we trace that magnet pull, and we have then trapped Magneton. And the thing is, if we do this after Magneton has already come in and has locked itself into a move, we can then go for Shadow Ball, recover, Shadow Ball, recover, all this stuff, and eventually knock it out. Or if we pull the double and go for, and you know, tempt him to, uh, or make him realize he's stuck, what's his only way of getting out? It's Volt Switch. And in doing so, if he's choice locked, he locks himself into Volt Switch, I can go into Garchomp, anticipating that, and then hit it really hard with an Earthquake or something like that. So, that's the idea. Uh, Porygon 2 should be able to put in a lot of work. Next up is going to be Volcarona, which I still don't have a nickname for, but the idea here is another setup sweeper, very similar to last week. It's just, you know, outspeeding what's relevant and then doing the most damage. Between Fiery Dance, Bug Buzz, and Giga Drain, I hit everything super hard. You know, just looking at Mega Metachamp, Bug Buzz. Darmanitan is the one exception, but at plus one, um, Z Bug Buzz actually Oko's Darmanitan from full. So that's not a problem. Uh, Fiery Dance is doing a lot to Floet. Uh, Fiery Dance is doing a lot to Thunderous T. Bug Buzz a lot to Latias. Fiery Dance to Fortress. Fiery Dance to. You can see the picture, right? Volcarona at plus one is decimating his team. The only thing potentially stopping it, Accelerock from Lycanroc and Fake Outs, repeated Fake Outs from Mega Metacham, or maybe Scarf Lottie or Scarf Thunderous T if they have Hidden Power Rock or something like that, because what's really cool is thanks to Giga Drain, I can actually heal up on certain Mons by going for Giga Drain if they're already weakened or something like that, or if I you know completely set up on them. And I do have opportunities to set up on stuff like Fortress, potentially a Latias after it's gone for Draco, Potentially Thunderous T. It really depends on whether or not rocks are up as well. I'm going to try and keep rocks off the field as well as I can. Might not always be an option though. I can set up on Gastronon. Um, I can set up on Venusaur. I can set up on Scrafty. I probably scare that out. Same goes for Magneton. So that's, that's kind of the plan there. Of course, Volcarona is really scary to work with too, given it is relatively frail due to rocks. And I definitely don't want to get toxic. And I do need to be careful of Ditto as well. I don't want to get reverse swept by my own mod, because that would be less than ideal. <laughs> so, yeah. Oops, that is that is my team. Um, the next mod I wanted to bring was actually Greninja. Uh, yes, Tsuyu Chan, we're bringing back Life Orb, Gren, Surf, Ice Beam, Water Shuriken, and Hidden Power Grass. As you might anticipate, uh, Gren is here just for good coverage moves. You know, Surf, um, you'd expect Dark Pulse as well, actually, for its neutral coverage and hitting stuff like Latios really hard. But really, I don't need it. Everything that Dark Pulse hits neutrally, I can either hit super effectively with um, one of my other moves, or hit harder with Surf. So, you know, Surf hits Mega Metachan really hard, Oko's Darmanitan, it hits, it hits everything really hard, and what it doesn't hit hard, um, Ice Beam does. So, you know, Magneton is getting 2 KO'd by Surf, uh, Scrafty is, depending on, depends on the set, um, Cloyster is getting 2 KO'd by Surf, uh, Venusaur is getting 2 KO'd by Ice Beam, Gastronon is getting 2 KO'd by H or HP Grass easily, Fortress is getting 2 KO'd by Surf, Swell is getting OKO'd by Ice Beam, Latias is getting 2 KO'd by Ice Beam, or Surf into Ice Beam, Thunder Sea is getting 2 KO'd by, or I think it's getting OKO'd by Ice Beam after it rocks, uh, all this sort of stuff. So. Gren just puts in a lot of work. Once rocks are up, things start getting chipped away. You know, Gren does its thing where it just comes in and it starts clicking buttons and it's super effective against whatever is in. And yeah, uh, that's that's the idea here. It's outspeeding what's relevant, which is like in rock um, day in this in this case. And we also have Water Shuriken because he has some mons that can set up himself. Um, I think Water Shuriken, when it has three hits, does like 40-ish percent to Thunderous T, which might be absolutely necessary. He might have a Sash, like in Rock Day, that I can Oko with three hits from Water Shuriken. Uh, Water Shuriken can be helpful for a Scarf Darmanitan. It can be helpful for Swellow if that gets out of hand. And it can be helpful for potentially a Shell Smash um, Cloyster or a Mega Metacham. Depends. A lot of things depend, but Water Shuriken is kind of like a worst case scenario backup extra damage. I, ne I needed priority on this team. I needed priority on this team, and this is what I end up with. Next up is Garchomp. This is where I started to kind of flail around a little bit with what I wanted to bring on my team. Um, I wanted to bring Garchomp. I really wanted to bring Rocky Helmet, but I just couldn't justify it with how few physical attackers he has that are actually threatening my team. And given that I have dedicated Reuniclus, it's just... 
It's just the matter of how it is. Um, that said, I want to bring it specifically for Darmanitan, because Darmanitan hits so hard. I need a quadruple resist um, to actually do anything. But I didn't want to dedicate myself to like full physically defense, because then it's really not helpful against anything else. So the idea here is I can run Scarf, Garchomp, and I can just hit most things really hard. Um, I outspeed a lot of his potential Scarfers, like Thunderous T, or um, potentially, I don't know, like Venusaur, or <laughs> Darmanitan, and that's really the idea behind it. I can outspeed some of his like faster threats that, you know, if Scarf, like they'll outspeed me anyways, but if they're Scarf, like I don't have to deal with their damage or like bo damage boosting items or anything like that, so uh, they're a lot more manageable, especially Latios, and potentially even, you know, set up fodder for some of my team. So, yeah, between Earthquake, Outrage, and Rock Slide, I hit everything I really plan on hitting super effectively, I'm most afraid of Thunderous T in that sense. I still do a lot to Gastrodon and Venusaur to the point that they can't just like freely set up on me, especially if they're toxic. Um, I still 2 hit KO Cloyster with Outrage. I'm 2 hit KOing Magneton after a Rock switch in or two um, with Outrage. I Oko Lycanroc with Outrage. So I'm still doing a lot of damage even to the resists with Outrage. And you know, Rock Slide is for Thunderous T. If I anticipate Fortress, if he brings Fortress, which he always has in the games he has played, um, if I anticipate that switching in and I want to make sure that thing can't get up rocks, I can go for Fire Blast, and it does minimum 101% to Fortress. So that's why that is there. It also still hits Venusaur decently hard and Cloyster, if that's the switch in for whatever reason. But yeah, um, this also gives me an answer to Mega Metacham. I can switch it in on a Fake Out, get a little bit of chip, and then scare it out slash knock it out with Earthquake or Outrage, depending on how much chip I have on him. And it also punishes Darmanitan's U-turns, or Flare Blitzes, or potential little Thunderous T U-turns. And I wanted an Electric Immunity for Thunderous T. Also, something that can potentially force Latias to go for a Draco Meteor, which, um, again, allows me to set up with some of my other mods. So, that's the rationale, and it's scary, but it's kind of what I settled on. <laughs> and then the, uh, the last mod is going to be Bronzong. Bronzong is coming back, it's been a while. Earthquake, Toxic, Rocks, and Protect, Max, Bedef, because I needed to take pressure off of Porygon 2 from a physically defensive standpoint. Oh, we're going to have a, a music change in a second. Um, from a physically defensive standpoint, I actually have a decent chance to take a Flare Blitz from Scarf Darmanitan, which is interesting um, because I'm heat proof. I, or no, I actually, I definitely take a Scarf Flare Blitz from Adamant Darmanitan. It's, I have a 50% chance of living a high jump kick from Mega Metacham, but I also have Protect because I easily bait the high jump kick from Mega Metacham, and that's a good opportunity in that sense. Um, as far as like Scrafty goes, or Cloyster, Cloyster and Lycanroc, I'm not worried about them. Uh, Darmanitan I have Garchomp potentially, and Mega Metacham I have Reuniclus, so I don't need to worry about it physically defensive. It's a great resist to his special attackers, especially Latios, um, Float, Eternal, and Swellow, and um, Venusaur. So it's really helpful in that sense. As far as Magneton goes, I'm not too worried because I actually take two um, Specs HP Fires, and um, or actually two Specs Thunderbolts, and I Oko it with Earthquake, unless it's a Violite, in which case I 2 KO it pretty easily. And if it's a Violite, it's not doing anywhere near as much damage to me, so I'm not worried about that. And I can also protect for extra Leftovers recovery while that's going on. So yeah, this is my Rocker. And rocks are going to be really important in building up chip on everything, potentially breaking fortresses sturdy, uh, putting things in water shuriken range if absolutely necessary, and putting things into a KO range from Gren's attacks for in the case of stuff like Cloyster or like Venusaur, um, just helping out with all the chip. And Toxic for all the things that might want to set up or come in on it, like Thunderous T, which does 70% uh, at plus 2 with Thunderbolt, you know, like 90% if it's Life Orb, which is very scary so I don't want to let things just set up all over me in in that sense uh, I do bait fortress in when I can potentially go into my Volcarona on that it, it's kind of tough but you know Bronzong is kind of my sponge it's my mixed bulk this turn because or this match because I really need Reuniclus to be dedicated I really need Porygon 2 for his, some of his setup sweepers and I really need Garchomp for Darmanitan so I, um, I really wanted to fit hazard removal on this team. I really wanted to for Volcarona's sake, 
but I just couldn't fit Scizor or Gliscor on this team. I could not make them work. I really wanted to bring Taunt Gliscor for Fortress, but but again, it just, it just didn't have a utility outside of that. It just really didn't. And I think I'm just better off trying to prevent rocks from going up, and then if they go up, playing really smart with Volcarona outside of that. Um, and see what I can do with it. But yeah, that's, that's the team. Again, I think it can get the job done. It, is it the best team? Probably not. Is it my favorite team? Probably not. Am I the most confident with this team? Probably not. But I do think, nevertheless, that if I play well, I can make it work with this team. And like I said, it might not be as pretty. It might not be a 6-0 like last week. But I think we can, we can pull it off. So I hope you guys are looking forward to it. I hope that I can actually record it live because it could be an interesting one. Uh, there's no doubt about it. I don't want to discredit Liam because he's been struggling a bit this season. But he is a good battler when he does play, and yeah, um, I, I guess I should mention a couple scouting things. He always leads Fortress. He always leads Fortress and gets up rocks first. And then every single time Mega Metacham has come out um, or hit the field, it has gone for fake out every single time. So he doesn't really seem to make the Metacham play where it's like, oh, I outspeed my opponent. I can just go for high jump kick rather than fake out as he as my opponent potentially switches out into a counter. Um, he tends to just go for fake out right away. But who knows, I don't want to get too complacent in that, but that's just what my scouting has led me to. But yeah, um, look forward to seeing you guys in the match. But until then, this has been Night Zero, and this mission is complete.